Okay, so I want to talk about this uh, one to two player game here called Madoshi, Priests of the Sun and Moon. Um, I came across this game by accident, and, and I think it's pretty cool. Uh, I ordered it, and uh, I've played it. And here I'm going to tell you how the two player game is played. And on another uh, video, I'm going to do a solo playthrough. Okay, so basically here I'm just going to tell you how this is played. Uh, the worshippers of the sun and moon are at odds. Two powerful priests engage in battle for the dominance of the yokai, the spiritual essence of all things deemed supernatural by mortal man, and the yokai can bring good fortune or bad. Harness the elements, capture yokai, and use their magic to swing the balance of the night and day to your favor. Seize enough of their power and you will reign victorious. Instruction book is pretty clear. And uh, this is how you set up the game. Well, you have this, right? This is the turn order summary. Uh, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to swap one element token with another. And you cannot use uh, voids or wild tokens, and I'll show you those in just a second. And then you collect a yokai card, which are these over here, if if you happen to uh, uh, match the, um, the image there. And I'll show you that in just a second. And then you use the magic of the card. So it's, it's, it's fairly simple. So what you do is you're gonna get these tiles, right? And um, depending on what tile it is, it'll have either a void or wild on the other side. So you mix these up and then you set them up on this uh, little board, which is pretty cool. So for a two player game, you decide if you're gonna be, uh, if you're gonna represent the sun or you're gonna represent uh, the moon, okay? And then you set these cards up. As you can see here, uh, this is Madoshi level three. So these are all level three cards. There's few, fewer level three cards than uh, level two cards and fewer level two cards than level one cards because uh, they uh, grow in difficulty, right? Level three is more difficult than level two and more difficult than level one. So as you can see here, this is level. these are the level one cards. What you do is you shuffle these and you set them up like this face up. Here's level two cards, okay? So these are gonna be uh, the cards that you're gonna be trying to, to match with these, uh, with these um, uh, chips here, these wooden chips here, uh, to be able to gather the cards, uh, use the magic, and then put them here uh, as points, right? So, gee, Alex, how do you do that? Well, I'm yellow, right? I'm the sun. So as you can see on each card, you have uh, yellow and green, right? Green's going to be uh, the moon over there. Yellow and green, yellow and green. I am supposed to match uh, this configuration here on this board, okay? Obviously, the level one is easier, right? As you can see there. Now, gee, Alex, this is a five by five, and these are you know three by three squares. Yeah, because they'll f you know th they'll fit in here, so it could be anywhere. It could be these four. It could be these four. It could be I'm, I'm, when it, when it, you know I'm saying four, but you know this three by three square, or this three by three, or this three by three. It doesn't matter within this five by five uh, board here. So what you got to do is you got to match the position of that with any of these elements. Now it has to be the same element, preferably, as you can see there, wind. Okay, if you can match um, the same elements in this configuration, and they happen to be wind uh, tokens, wind discs here. Uh, then that means that you collect that card, okay? And because I mat I matched it with wind, then that means I captured it with source, okay? So again, uh, the turn order is that you swap. So the first thing you do is swap. So you look at this. L let's look at that one, for instance. 
I'm looking for two symbols and then one uh, diagonally down like that, right? Anywhere in here. So I, I have, for instance, these two here, okay? These are fire. They're not wind. If I can match wind, that would be better. Well, look here. There's two white, two white ones. These are wind. So if I have these two and I put a wind here, then I match that, right? So what do I do? First thing I'm supposed to do is swap, right? So I'm going to swap this one for this one. All right, now in this three by three square here, I have that exact configuration right there, the yellow which is me, the sun, okay? And I happen to match uh, the wind element, which is what this card requires, wind, right? So what do I do? I collect this card. Now I do the magic that's up here. I have to, as soon as I collect the card, whether I match the element or not, because I don't, I don't have to do it with wind. I, I could have done it with any of these elements. Uh, but that would be um, captured without source, right? But I managed to capture with source. So we do the magic, which is flip a wood token. Okay, so then I would take a, a wood token. Where's a wood one like that? There's a wood one. I would flip it. Now, it's either going to be void or it's going to be um, a wild, right? Let's see. This is a void as well. There's a void, there's a void, there's a wild, right? So it's either going to be void or wild. That happens to be void. And uh, in the first part of your turn, when you have to swap, you can never swap a void or a wild, okay? So that's basically the only restriction. Now, the wild uh, can represent any of these elements. And void is just void. It does nothing, and you can't use it as part of a, a, a combination here. But we managed to do this, uh, you know, it, it, from my orientation, right? Because that's important. It has to be from your orientation as the player, okay? So we managed to match that uh, here in the yellow. It is wind, so I captured this uh, with source so i would put it in here like that and that means uh, i got two points as opposed to had i captured without source it would have been a one but i captured with source so it's two all right and the magic here was that we had to flip a wood token so that's the end of my turn okay uh, now, then the other uh, player goes, and of course they have to match with the green from their perspective, right? So then they, as it says here, they swap. Uh, and again, these are level one, so these are going to be easier. These are going to be a little harder, as you can see here for green, right? It's a little harder. And here's the toughest one. Why? Because without source, it'll give you three points. With source, five points, right? And you're going to play like this until one of these piles uh, has been exhausted. It's finished. It's empty. There's no more cards on it. Uh, and then you're going to look at your score. You're going to see how many uh, you captured with source, how many you captured without source. And uh, you add your points, and, and whoever has uh, the most points uh, wins. So essentially, uh, that's it for, for Madoshi. Uh, it's a really, it's a really cool game. It's a bit thinky. It's a puzzly game, which I really uh, enjoy. And uh, I am going to do a solo playthrough because this is a two-player game, but uh, a one or two-player game. So you can play it solo. And basically, solo, you, you know, obviously you're just going to be playing one side. And uh, as you uh, accomplish these, you know, same turn order, right? You, you swap and then you try to match one of these. If you can't match it, you've got to burn one of these cards. You basically take, you can choose from a level one, two, or three and just burn it, put it off to the side. Okay? And as soon, and you, and you just play like that by yourself. And as soon as one of these piles is exhausted, now, of course, every time you don't make a match, one of these, you got to burn one of these. So it's sort of like a timer, right? 
uh, when one of these piles is exhausted, you see how many points you got, right? And even on here uh, uh, with the solo, let me see where it shows you. Uh, there it is, you know. Uh, it depends on how many points you get uh, as a solo, right? Whether you're a novice, an accolade, a monk, or a high priest. There's a, a solo solo mode right there. And, and, and the magic in some of these cards uh, will be different. Sometimes they'll, they'll ask you to rotate uh, four. So like, let's say these four here, you, then you just rotate them like this. That's one of the magic things that can help us uh, screw you, <laughs> your opponent. Um, another piece of magic is uh, moving uh, these discs uh, horizontally, either right or left or vertically, which means let's say we were doing horizontally, I can move these this way. And then of course, the one that comes out on this end goes over here. And I could have done that on the second or third or, you know, on any of the rows there. And then when it's vertical, it's, you know, this way. And uh, what's another piece of magic here? Um, you know, flipping uh, these tiles over. And uh, one of the pieces of magic too is flipping uh, one void uh, back over or all voids, right? So sometimes you'll be playing this game, there'll be three or four different voids on the board and you can't touch them and do anything with them. But depending on the magic on these cards, you're able to flip all of them over. So there's different pieces of magic and uh, which will allow you to work the board. Even one piece of magic is rotating the board, the entire board, 180 degrees. So let's say, <coughs> excuse me, you're working on something over here. You know, you're slowly trying to work on something. And, and then uh, your opponent happens to, to do one of these cards and the magic is flipping the board 180 degrees. Well, now the orientation is all screwed up, right? Because you, you, know, you have to set these pieces from your orientation if I'm yellow and from their orientation if they're doing green, uh, which is sun and moon. But anyway, uh, I was really uh, pleasantly surprised. I mean, I, I heard about uh, this game. I, like I said, I kind of stumbled upon it. Um, and I really have enjoyed it. I've played a number of times uh, as a two-player and a couple of times uh, solitaire. And like I said, I will be putting a subsequent video here where I'm going to do a playthrough uh, solo. But a very cool two-player game. Um, and that's it, uh, Madoshi, uh, check it out, Priests of the Sun and the Moon, good stuff.